What's up guys, I'm Dheerendra Singh Jamwal and welcome to Bite the Bullet. This is the love of my life, my air rifle. Um, her anatomy is slightly different from what you might have learned in biology classes. So I'll just go over a few parts of the air rifle. Before that, what is an air rifle? Why is, how is it different from a regular rifle? When you operate the trigger, it activates a firing pin. And the firing pin charges the gunpowder and the gunpowder burns and the bullet leaves the rifle mechanism. But, and that's how a regular rifle works. But in an air rifle, you have none of that. You, have, you load only something called a pellet and the entire pellet leaves the rifle mechanism. And what is used to push the pellet outside the rifle mechanism? Simple. It's air. So that's why this is called an air rifle. Um, now let's move to the parts of an air rifle. The parts of an air rifle is broadly divided into three parts. We have the sights, we have the barrel action and we have the stock. First we'll start with the sights. If you've shot before, you would have shot with something called an open sight. Traditionally it will be a vertical front sight and either a U or a V backside which you align with the front side and if it is properly aligned with the bull of the target then you will get a bullseye. What we use in Olympic rifle shooting is slightly different. We use something called a peep sight. This is your front side. As you see it's circular and this is your back side. You have a pinhole for the back side which is again circular. And if you see the target, you can see it's circular. So what we have to do is we align the front side to the circular target. We align the pinhole of the back side to the front side. And when all these circles are concentric, then we will get the bullseye. From the sides, we we'll go to the barrel. This entire part of the rifle is called the barrel. This is the part in which your pellet travels. Now we load the pellet in this chamber over here. This is called the breech. We load the pellet over here and this is called the loading lever. So we load a pellet in the loading breech and we just close the loading lever. And now it's ready to shoot. So this is your air cylinder which is pre-filled. So you can fill it up to a 300 bar. And uh, this cylinder is detachable. So once the cylinder gets empty, it can be detached like this and it can be filled. You have a gauge over here to show how much air is left in the air cylinder. You can refill this air cylinder using a scuba tank or something, uh, some cylinder similar to that and we use compressed air in this cylinder. Now the cylinder is attached to something called a regulator. The regulator is the heart of my air rifle and why I say that is because the regulator pulls in exactly the same amount of air for each and every shot. Now, let's assume my regulator has gone bad and my regulator would normally work at 100 bar. I have 200 bar in my air cylinder. So, it is supposed to pull in only 100 bar of pressure each time. If this is spoiled, in one shot if it pulls in 105 bar in one shot in the next shot if it pulls in 110 bar there is a lot of difference in pressure that is loaded into the regulator now what happens is when when there's different amounts of air then there is a lot more force uh, in pushing out the pellet or less force in pushing out the pellet so when there's less force in pushing out the pellet the pellet will drop and when there's a lot more force pushing out the pellet the pellet will rise then you'll have a vertical group like that. So that's why I say this is the heart of the rifle. From the regulator, we'll go move to the trigger. The trigger is very adjustable. So I can uh, adjust my trigger based on how long my trigger finger is and what angle I would like my trigger finger to be and uh, what weight do I want my trigger to uh, function at. So that's very customizable and shooters are very fussy about their trigger adjustment because it's their moment of truth. So this constitutes the barrel action. 
Now let's move to the rifle stock. So the rifle stock starts from here and goes all the way to the back of the rifle. Now, depending on how long my arm is, how flexible my wrist is, and what position of the rifle I'm using, I can adjust something called a palm rest. So this is the palm rest. I can move this up or down. I can change the angles of it. I can move it front or back. Um, basically, the idea is that my rifle sits comfortably for my left hand if I'm a right-handed shooter. Now, moving to the right hand. This in the rifle is called the grip. If you notice, this side is flat. Uh, my right hand side is rounded because I can hold it and uh, I can turn it around the way I want. I can uh, move it front or back. I can also change angles to uh, ensure that my right wrist is comfortable while I'm holding the rifle. From the grip, we move to the cheek piece. Uh, the cheek piece is meant to place my cheek and depending on how long my neck is, I can move it up or down. Depending on what angle I want to place my cheek, uh, I can move this in different angles. I can move it front and back and uh, the idea of adjusting the cheek piece is to ensure that there is no strain on my neck. Uh, and my head is placed comfortably in such a way that I can see my sight picture perfectly for each and every shot. Finally, in the rifle, uh, in the rifle parts, this is the butt or the butt plate. Um, depending on how broad my shoulder is or how muscular I am or how uh, narrow my frame is, I can adjust the length of the stock using this adjustment. So this can move back or inside uh, and my butt plate itself can move in different angles depending on where I, play, uh, where I keep my rifle. Now one thing I wanted to mention over here is if you shot before you would have placed your rifle on the fleshy part of your chest but this rifle is placed on my arm. And it's adjusted in such a way that it holds on to this so these calipers can move uh, and to hold it, hold it into a place. Um, but what are we shooting at? So this is the actual size of the target. If you see the center of the target is 0.5 mm. To put things in perspective is a full stop that you might put on your notebook. Now the objective of this event is to shoot that full stop each and every time at a distance of 10 meters. So that's about it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope this was educational and helpful to you guys. In the next video, we'll talk about all the gear that we wear and why do we walk around, walk around like robots. So I'll answer this in my next video. Hope to see you there and stay safe till then guys and happy shooting. Bye.